Hello, friends. Welcome to Trending. Today is Thursday, April 27th. It's about 9.38 as we're getting rolling here this morning. Good morning, Joe. How's it going? Doing good. How are you? I'm, I'm all right, man. It's Thursday, a little rainy outside. Yep. Going to need the coffee to hit. Hit yes. different today. It is kind of one of those mornings. <laughs> yes. Okay, so for those of you who keep it track at home, we've been asking you the past few weeks about whether you prefer to keep it on video or if you'd rather be an audio podcast. It seems like the results are pretty 50-50. Like we're getting a little, yeah. little bit of everything. This is like the worst case scenario, right? Like there's no clear leading <laughs> and, we're no, both, and we're both people pleasers. Yeah. It's, so what are we going to do? There's no win or there's all win. That's right. We so, should just slip a coin maybe? I don't know. <laughs> for a while, we're going to continue to do both because that seems there seems to be at least an audience in both places. So for a while, we're going to keep doing gotcha. both. Right now, the podcast is still on the Rich Point Sermon Audio podcast feed. Eventually, we probably will split it out to it separate. We'll keep you posted whenever that happens. So keep an eye either here or wherever you're watching. We'll try to add a comment or something. We'll let you know where to find it. But for now, we're going to do both audio and video. That's so, right. That's cool. Thanks for your feedback, and we'll do our best to do whatever you want us to do. Yeah. Okay. Joe, today is a big sports day. Yeah. NBA playoffs are rolling. They are rolling. A lot happened in the NBA world. That draft is kicking off in Kansas City. That's right. That's Which kinda, uh, Did you see that report like... The state of Kansas like might receive like a hundred million dollars in revenue, it's like businesses crazy. and stuff, because of the people there. Yeah, so it's big day in Kansas and in sports world. There's a lot going on in sports. I still see the allure of going to the draft. I I, it, I need to do it probably before I like you know make my total conclusion. Yeah, but it's a lot of waiting around. Yeah, it first those first couple of days, man. Like it's just... I've got a few buddies who are going. I kind of get like if you're just a diehard fan, just being there at a historic moment, I kind of get it, but I it's not really for me either, I don't think. But yeah. But we're not gonna talk about the draft. We're okay. gonna talk about another sports story. Okay. But again, I want to give a disclaimer if anybody's not a sports fan, this is kind of a sports story, but kind of not. So we'll go kind of beyond what the sports yeah. takeaway is here. Yes, yeah, so hang tight. Yes, hang tight. Yeah. So last like I said, playoff NBA playoffs are rolling. I think it's still the first round, right? Second round is getting ready to start soon. I mean, there's still some uh, series that are not decided yet. Just a few of them are. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I, I have, I usually kind of catch up around this time is when I start watching. I'm kind of a fair weather basketball fan, but last night the Heat ended up beating the Bucks. So the, the Heat are moving on and the Bucks are out of the playoffs. Obviously the Bucks big stars. Giannis, an amazing player. Yeah. Like he's really fun to, like the, I would the Bucks, I'm probably never going to pick the Bucks to win. They're not my favorite team. Right. He's one of those guys, he is unbelievably talented and just a, a f fun, friendly guy to watch, I would say. He's a, he's a good guy, right? Yeah, and didn't Disney make a movie after yeah. like, his yeah. story and stuff, which is kind of heartwarming at the same time? Yeah. Um, actually, Avery and I got to watch Giannis in person. Okay. So we lived in Memphis. Um, we had some members of our church had seats 11 rows behind the visitor's bench. Oh, wow. Which were advantageous tickets for Grizzlies fans yeah. because they weren't they were good. Grizz has kind of struggled for a long time. And yeah. so it's kind of neat to be by the visitors bench. So like when the big NBA superstars come in to play Memphis, you can get close to them. That's cool. But now Memphis has yeah. got a great team going. Uh, they're on a great season, a uh, series of the Lakers. Yeah. So we actually got to watch Giannis. That's cool. And uh, it was great. He fouled out early. Like it was mm -hmm. like a weird game where he didn't like, he didn't perform very well. But yeah. he was still a marvel to watch in person. Like, yeah. I don't know if you've ever seen, you know, great athletes on TV. They're spectacular. Mm -hmm. But to see them in person is like a whole new level yeah. of appreciation what they can do. Yeah. That's very cool. He's he's a special player. Yeah. So yeah. So last night, his team, the Bucks, lost to the Heat. They're out of the playoffs. Right. So it's kind of, you know, we've seen this a million times. Right after the game, there's a press conference, right? People ask him a bunch of questions. So I'm actually going to play a clip from the press conference, and we'll talk about that for just a second. So here's what Giannis had to say last night. Uh, I'm curious for you. Do you view this season as a failure? We, you asked me the same question last year, Eric. Okay. Uh, do you get do you get a promotion every year on your job? No, right? So every year you work is a failure. Yes or no? No. Every every year you work, you work towards something, towards a goal, right? With, which is to get a promotion, to be able to uh, take care of your family, to be able, I don't know. Um, provide the house for them or take care of your parents. You work towards it. It's not a failure. It's steps to success. You know, and if you've never, I don't, know, I don't want to, I don't want to make it personal. So there's always steps to it. You know, um, Michael Jordan played 15 years, won six championship. The other nine years was a failure. That's what you're telling me. No, I'm asking you a question. Yes or no? 
Okay, exactly. So why are you asking me that question? It's a wrong question. There's no failure in sports. You know, there's good days, bad days. Some days, some days you are able to uh, be successful, some days you're not. Some days it's your turn, some days it's not your turn. And that's what sports is about. You don't always win. Some other, other people is going to win. And this year, somebody else is going to win. Similar as that. We're going to come back next year, try to be better, try to build good habits, try to uh, play better, not have a 10-day stretch with uh, playing bad basketball. You know, and hopefully we can win a championship. You know, I, sorry, that I didn't want to make it personal. Because you asked me the same question last year, and uh, last year I was in the, in the uh, right um, mind space to answer the question back. But I remember it. I guess there's kind of a lot there, Joe. But man, I think that's like one of my favorite press conferences I've heard in a while. Mm. Like he, he took a, 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 a pro, I mean, a loaded question, mm-hmm. but he took it. I'm, I'm just really impressed with his answer. There's a lot we could talk about. What stands out to you the most, Joe? I mean, there's a few things um, on the surface, but I think number one is there is, like I would just say in the background, there's a, an interesting camaraderie between press corps and these mm-hmm. individuals. And yeah. obviously, address this guy by name Mm -hmm. and he remembered that he asked the question a year ago yeah and let's be honest i think uh someone's gonna ask that question Mm -hmm. you know whether it's like a buck a bucks beat reporter Mm -hmm. like eric or someone just from associated press yeah who's not covering them directly Mm -hmm. um i think it's impressive about Giannis is that he he had the question he thought about it for a year Mm -hmm. Uh, now i can't recall if he answered the question last year, if he ignored the question or how he answered it, but he yeah. seemed to have like a full year of mulling it over. Mm-hmm. He probably anticipated this question could be asked. Yeah. You obviously could tell he's exasperated. Mm-hmm. Obviously you could tell that he's disappointed how their season went. Mm-hmm. Um, but he said something that I think is kind of a, a challenging thing. He says sports uh, is not about failure. Um, you can maybe say it another way, it's not about winning and losing. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not the popular opinion. Um, yeah. th- there might be a lot of people who think that, mm-hmm. but there's plenty of people who do not. Yeah. In fact, I I, I kind of caught the NBA um, crew at TNT uh, during the you know during the break, and they listened to Giannis's comments, and they began to chime in on it. And Shaq mm-hmm. had an opposite idea. He's like, "No, I was hardest on myself. Mm-hmm. You know, other people can be hard on you, but I was hard on myself." And he viewed any season that where they didn't win particularly when they got reached the nba finals and they didn't win yeah. as a failure because mm-hmm. of the expectations and so mm-hmm. you have these uh, two different narratives you have a narrative where sports is all about winning and losing then you have this narrative of sports sure there is a game that's played mm-hmm. um but there's also something else going on in the name of sports yeah. uh, and i think a philosopher would take a look at the two different games. We may have talked about this before. Simon Sinek popularized an idea that actually came from a uh, philosophy of religion guy um, where there's like two different games. One's the infinite game and one's mm-hmm. the finite game. Yeah, Finite games have be- definite rules, beginning and ends. Mm-hmm. Uh, and everybody knows those rules. And uh, when the game ends, there's an agreement that we're not going to continue to keep playing just because we didn't like the outcome. Like mm-hmm. we, we agreed before we started, this is what the terms were, right? Yeah. And that is, I guess, about winning and losing. The infinite game, Cynic says, Simon Cynic, he says it's about keeping the game going. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's like, you have quagmire in relationships, you have quagmire in organizations, you have quagmire in communities. Mm-hmm. When some people are playing finite games mm-hmm. and some people are playing infinite games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And those things collide, and that's where disagreement, misunderstanding, and ultimately hardship and uh, disunity. Uh, yeah. takes place. And mm-hmm. so I think what we have here, just in general, is Giannis is trying to speak to the infinite game that happens in sports. Mm-hmm. So there's an ongoing game that's being played, yeah. and he gets to partake in it for a while. Mm-hmm. And then he's not, uh, yeah. but it's going to continue to go on. And so he says, no, let's go another year. Let's take another step in the in the next year, mm-hmm. uh, because there's something else going on. And this is what happened in this you know series with the Miami Heat. Yeah. So that's, uh, I guess, my initial thought to it we can unpack that a bit further but um i i think i just admire it seems like Giannis, a ton of pressure you know mm-hmm. great athlete high expectations yep for him to respond this way and to even apologize that he may have taken it a bit too far and made it personal to eric like mm-hmm. a like a beef with eric um i think it's an important thing i think it shows quite the maturity uh mental health yep. all of those things mm-hmm. uh, he's been working on it not just his 
sport, but he's also also as like a human being interacting within this like high octane space that we call athletics. Yeah. Yeah. I think one thing that's interesting about sports or similar things is that like it literally is a game. Like it's a game. <laughs> but for these guys, it's also their job. It's a career. Like they've devoted their entire lives to this game, right? So yeah, on one sense, I was everyone who plays a game wants to win. Like that's yeah. why we play games. Like that's that's how that's why they're fun. That's why they're competitive. So on one hand, like I understand if you're gonna play a game as for your living, you want to win, right? Right. But I think it's interesting that he kind of put it back on Eric because like, hey, did you get a promotion this year? Mm -hmm. And it, what he was really saying is like, why do you work? Mm -hmm. Do you work so that every day you can win? Like so you can be, you can win each day and get promoted. Is that why you're working? And then Yana said, or are you working so that you can provide for your kids, provide for your family, provide a house for your kids? Yeah. So that that's the whole thing too. Is like, why are we working? Yeah. Are we working so that we can win each day, or is there something behind our work? Right. Yeah. yeah. And I think it speaks to how um, something can be the same but change at the same time, or mm -hmm. our utility of something. Yeah. Can be one thing at the beginning, and mm -hmm. then it can change over time. Yeah. So, for instance, like an athlete may use the sport of basketball as a way to get in shape. Mm -hmm. They may use it to uh, compete, mm -hmm. uh, to feel some sort of a sense of victory or victory or um, some sort of, a, I don't know, occupation, vocation, because they're great at this game, right? Mm -hmm. So they're using this game for something personal. Mm -hmm. But maybe over time it does change to where now the, the game of basketball is not just something that I use to win and have like to feel like get something from it, but I'm actually donating towards the mm -hmm. ongoing wonder of this game yeah. uh, to where instead of basketball, the game being servant to me, I'm becoming servant to it. Mm. Um, I kind of felt the same way. I feel the same way about hockey and I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm no, I'm not a pro athlete. This is not, I'm not making an equivalence here, but I've just sensed over time, my interaction with the game of hockey has changed. Mm -hmm. I think I started playing because it was a new sport. It was fun. Um, mm -hmm. Of course. And I wanted to win. Yeah. I wanted to get better. I wanted to be looked at as a leader on a team. Mm -hmm. Um, but over time, I've just sensed that hockey now is just something like I want to make sure the game is played well and that people mm. treat the game well. There was yeah. actually a time when I was in Atlanta and there was a guy like doing cheap shots and stuff, yeah. like really just, you know, causing a ruckus. And I remember like something within me and this is this is out of character for me, mm -hmm. but something in me like wanted to stop him. And so I absolutely blasted him because <laughs> I'm like, he's mistreating the game that I really care for. Yeah. And he doesn't, he's not playing it right. Mm -hmm. And I took exception to it. Yeah. And now that my kids, I, I, hockey's changing again. Yeah. But now that my kids are playing and I'm kind of ushering them into this experience of hockey, my greatest fear is that it, the game won't treat them well. Like maybe they will have a, maybe along the way, a coach will uh, say something that really wounds them. Yeah. Or uh, they get hurt. Mm -hmm. uh, or um, they felt like at some point it wasn't fun anymore and they kept playing because it was a duty. Yeah. Like they feel like they had to because uh, it was going to please dad if I keep mm -hmm. on playing. Like, so I want my kids to get the joy of hockey like I have. Yeah. But I do have a fear, um, a small fear, that mm -hmm. it, it won't treat them the same way it's treated me. And so there's just like a, a hesitancy there. Yeah. But I think that, that this highlights how even the Christian faith and how we interact with it can change over the course of our lifetime of discipleship too. Hmm. People may get into Christianity on very uh, selfish terms. And I'm not saying like negative, but like they hear the call of the gospel individually mm -hmm. that they want to have a pardon of their sins. Yeah. Right. They mm -hmm. kind of look at like all that, uh, that choice and they say, well, I want to be on the right side of that choice. Mm -hmm. So they may enter in with like complete selfish motives. Yeah. But then over time, the Christian faith that turns into something else. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it does mm -hmm. to where um, they don't have to gain from it any longer, but they donate towards it. Like to where yeah. Christianity doesn't serve them, but they mm -hmm. serve the cause of Christ. Yeah. That is the hope of discipleship over time. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's great material out there. A guy named Richard Rohr talks about how in the life of a, of a human in their particular spiritual experience, like the first half of life, we build the container of significance like I want to build something or I want to conquer something or I want to be smart, yeah. like add to something. He says, but the second half of life is that you've actually filled that container with meaning mm -hmm. to where it's not about wins and losses, but it's about the community that it attaches me to. It's yeah. about 
the struggle with a group of people, the up and the down of trying to advance something to bring progress mm -hmm. uh, to a, a category, a theme, an industry, yeah. uh, organization, a community, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he says that he senses that as he watched people over time that we do like charge up the hill the first half of life. Yeah. And then the second half of life, we get into the gray, uh, we get into a kind of slower pace and it's more about mm -hmm. the people around us yeah. than the wins and loss column. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, like this, this might be a hair risky, but like there is a TV show right there, like right <laughs> out there right now that can help articulate this dynamic. It's Ted Lasso on Apple Plus. I understand that there's some language and some themes that people may not care about, but if you actually can just roll with the narrative, mm -hmm. I mean, this is in real time. Like they are doing something beautiful with this story mm -hmm. about a sports team and helping people realize there's something more going on yeah. than whether if we are successful in the win and loss column yeah. and if we can win championships and hang banners. But who are we becoming as people mm -hmm. seems to be more integral yeah. than the performance um, on athletic field. And that's why, like, I think that's one reason why pretty much everyone has at least some interest in sports. Most people have some interest in sports because there are so many of those themes right. that, yeah, you're trying to win a game, but like, that's what you always hear about, right? The, the, the teamwork or the learning to would live with defeat or learning how to be successful or what. There's so many lessons within sport that I think apply to all of life, right? And you, you brought up the spiritual thing and like those parallels and those analogies are in scripture all the time, right? Winning, mm -hmm. winning races. And like that, Paul talked about that pretty often. This, yeah. So I guess, um, as we start, kind of start to wrap up here, for yeah. people who are not NBA superstars, we've we've covered a lot already. But like, yeah. um, I also appreciated Giannis's humility. Like, there's a lot that we could learn from which, how he handled that. I guess. Right, right. So I guess for someone who's watching, who's, you know, if they're a parent or not, or if they're in school, or if they're in a job, what are the kind of final things? What else can we learn from this quote from Giannis? Anything? Anything else we haven't haven't gotten to yet? There, there's a good TED talk by uh, David Brooks, a uh, David Brooks New York Times columnist. Um, he wrote, he's written a lot of books on, along this topic and he did a Ted talk in correlation with one of those books. And he said, it's time for us to start working on our eulogies instead of our resumes. Mm -hmm. Um, there's no doubt, um, on our, uh, on our day of remembrance when people gather around and remember yeah. our life, they're going to, they're going to remember people from our workplaces are going to remember the things that we did and achieved yeah. as a job or even uh, like extracurricular serving stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but they're going to tell stories. Uh, where our character was probably more uh, yeah. prevalent and more mm -hmm. clear than the tasks and deeds that we did. And I think that we got to start working on that. Yeah. And uh, we tend to work on that in a, in a moment of struggle. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I've been uh, wrestling with is like this theme of the test or testing. There are characters in the Bible that are tested. Hmm. And sometimes they're tested by God uh, in order to kind of bring out uh, spiritual maturity. Yeah. Uh, the saints uh, from the... You know, church fathers and stuff, they actually call, call this like spiritual athleticism, hmm. how God will put us through training in order yeah. to make us better performers in the Christian life. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I've been wrestling with, uh, we actually talk about this in a small group on staff, we're doing a small group study, is this idea like, what if we treated um, maybe four or five times a day, like when there's a challenging moment that we have, mm -hmm. what if we consider it a test? Mm -hmm. And will I pass the test or not? Yeah. Um, and how can I prepare myself for that test? Just like any of the tests that we took in school or, or certification tests. Like we, yeah. we didn't just wake up and take it. Like we actually prepared for it. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got to believe that like Giannis was preparing for this moment. Yeah. And yeah. he knew that he was going to be heard. Mm -hmm. And I think that he actually was well prepared for this mm -hmm. because he actually thought about it. So I would just say those two things. Let's work on our eulogies. And let's consider a couple of meaningful moments in nearly every day of our Christian existence, there is a test. There's, I can go this way or I can go this way. Mm -hmm. And uh, this way would probably honor the Christian tradition and the God I serve, or you know, this way may not. Yeah. And um, I just want to be prepared to pass the test mm -hmm. and whenever that test comes up. Yeah. It could be in the middle of traffic. It could mm -hmm. be in the middle of a very tense conversation at work. It could be mm -hmm. Uh, you're exhausted. Uh, kids are demanding you. And um, man, the next thing you say, they're going to remember because communication mm -hmm. is irreversible, like the yeah. toothpaste is out of the tube. And so how can I respond with grace mm -hmm. instead of just reacting uh, with what whatever's going on inside of me? Yeah. And so I think that takes a lot of internal work. It takes, uh, I think, prayer. It takes uh, reflection, meditation, what, you know, insert your favorite category mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. But I do think like looking at tests and then looking mm -hmm. at the long run, the infinite game, yeah. And not just finite game. Yep. Like excelling at that mm -hmm. would be a worthwhile thing to consider.
Yeah, and just the intentionality behind that, right? Because I think all of us, like, we kind of, if you're not if you're not careful, we all slip into autopilot and we go to school, we go to college, we get a job, and, like, you just do the thing, and you don't really think about why, right? Like, why is Giannis playing basketball? Like, that was kind of what he was getting at. Like, what is the purpose of his job? Right. Is it to win, or is it deeper than that? I think it's it's wise for us to do that, too. Yeah. Like, why are you working, or why are you a parent? Why are you whatever? Yeah. And like, what's the deeper reason behind that? And how does that affect your decision to stay today, right? I think yeah. those are good things for us to all wrestle with. Yeah, absolutely. And like, there's going to be some who will criticize and say, well, yeah, but like season ticket holders want them to win. Right, to sure. Perform their best. We're paying yep. millions of dollars. Yep. We could also look at the other way. Like we're also like someone's paying millions of dollars to be a better human being. Yeah. And to get us out of this gridlock of winning and losing to look yeah. at life as just one pie and I got to get my piece before mm-hmm. somebody takes it. Yeah. He's actually uh, like, ushering us into like there's actually a wiser stream and tradition going on yep um and uh, I, i'm here for it because i think that's yeah. a lesson that's a good moral medicine yep for world like ours where it seems like there's there's bat there's uh there's a battle lines being drawn every day mm-hmm. and we're being constrained into win or lose yeah. uh, zero sum games right and that's just not healthy for us in our spiritual life and it's not healthy for us as a spiritual community we, we gotta go above that I think it was just last week we talked about the wrestle between ambition and contentment, right? Mm-hmm. Like kind of the same thing. Winning is not a bad thing, but kind of like money is not a bad thing. What, how, how, what you do with it, how you think about it, how you use it, yeah, that's what matters, yeah. right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, thank you, Giannis. That was yeah. a great, Yeah, I just love that clip. Like, and talk about eulogy. I, this is the kind of thing I think people will talk about whenever he retires, right? Yeah. He's, he's gonna win a lot of games. He'll probably win some MVPs, win a lot of awards. But he's a good, like he's this kind of person. Yeah. And that's what people are going to remember. Yeah. You know? Like I remember Kevin Durant's MVP speech. Like, yeah. Like when he was a young guy, obviously a great player, but he talked about his mom's sacrifice. Right. Yeah. You're the real MVP. And that's like, like the most, one of the most uh, shared memes, you know? Of course. That's a eulogy moment. Yeah. It's not just a resume moment. Agreed. And uh, I think that that's a, a lovely thing, a beautiful thing for us to consider. Agreed. All right. Well, thanks to Giannis. Good thoughts from you, Joe. Thanks for your to you, input man. today. Yeah, that's good stuff. Thanks for you. Whether you're watching or listening, grateful for your time. Have a great day. We'll hope to see you on Sunday. Yeah, see you next time. Okay, see ya.